This video discusses how to count the number of possible outcomes in one event. Well, here is one famous quote from Leibniz. Music is the pleasure that human mind experiences from counting without being aware that it is counting. In this video, we're going to double the pleasure because we know we have to count. Based on the def naive definition of probability, we know the probability link links the random event A to a number, now negative number from 0 to 1 by this formula, which is the ratio of number of outcomes in A divided by the number of all possible outcomes in S, sample space. So we need to know how to calculate the number of outcomes in either A and S in order to apply this naive definition of probability. Well, it looks simple and it's designed for common but very limited case. So the naive probability only applies uh, to cases where outcomes are finite and each outcome is equally likely to occur. However, it's already quite complicated in certain cases because it's not always easy to count the number of outcomes in one event. We are going to need the help of binomial coefficient. n choose k, this symbol is written as n choose k, defined as n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial. We'll discuss about this formula in later slides in details. So in this video, we're going to pick up some tricks of how to count by walking through two problems. Problem one has in poker. So suppose we are picking up five cards out of 15, uh, sorry, out of 52 cards, a standard well shuffled 52 card. That's basically a poker without taking include of uh, without take taking uh, two jokers in account without including the two jokers. And we call a combination of five cards a full house if the five cards consist of three cards from the same rack and two cards of another rack, for example, three sevens and two tens in any order. So we don't care about order in this pro problem. The question is, what is the probability of a full house? Well, to apply the naive probability, we need to know the number of all possible outcomes. And we also need to know how many outcomes are in the event A, where A denotes the set of outcomes that are a full house. Okay, so how many outcomes are a full house and how many, what is the, and how many uh, possible outcomes in total. So let's first calculate the number of outcomes, uh, all outcomes, all possible outcomes. We're going to apply the multiplication rule. In this case, in this problem, it's going to be sampling without replacement. So we have n cards. We need to select k cards. Let's select one card at a time. And each time we're going to keep the selected cards without putting it back. So that's going to be sampling without replacement. So how many outcomes when order matters? Let's say if in step one, we have n possible cards to choose from. So there are n possible outcomes. Then we keep the card. So in step two, we only have n minus one cards to choose from. That means we have n minus two possible outcomes. Step three, n minus two, until in step k, that's going to be n minus k plus one possible outcomes. According to the multiplication rule, how many possible outcomes we can have in total for ordered outcomes? And then we simply multiply those numbers all together. So we have capital N number of ordered outcomes, which will be a product from n until n minus k plus 1. 
there is a shorter version of writing this N, this capital N, once we introduce factorial. Well, we define this factorial function maps all integers, non-negative integers, to another integer by this formula. So we map it maps 0 to 1, and for the other non-zero integers, uh, positive integers, it maps n to n times n minus 1 until 1, right? That's it called, that is called n factorial. For example, 3 factorial will be equal to 6, which is 3 times 2 times 1. Now, with this factorial, we can write this capital N, the number of ordered outcomes in our short version, which will be n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. Here is a very nice interpretation for the factorial, which also gives an alternative interpretation of how we arrive at this number of ordered outcomes. So how many, how many, how many permutation ways we can have if we have n atoms? How many ways we can order n different cars? Think about that, right? What could be the first cars? How many choices do you have? n choices, right? So n possible outcomes. Second, second card, n minus 1, until 1. So we can order n cards in n factorial different ways. That is basically the number of possible permutations of n atoms. That is the underlying interpretation of this factorial. So how many ways you can permute n atoms? In this case, we have we can order the cars in n factorial different ways, but we don't care about the ordering of the n minus k not selected cars, and they can be ordered in n minus k factorial ways. So the number of ordered outcomes for the k selected cars will be n factorial divided by n minus k factorial. So this is the number of all possible outcomes of n cars, but we don't care what happens to the n minus k not selected cars, right? So this is why n is the number of possible ordered outcomes for picking k cars out of n cars. However, if we want to calculate the number of outcomes in S, well, in S, we don't care about the ordering, right? We still need to adjust for the overcounting. We don't care for the orders of selected cars either. So how do we adjust this? You can pause the video at this moment and think, do you have a way to correct this N to make this N into the number of outcomes in S, where order does not matter? The answer is simple. Divide by k factorial, right? Because we don't care for the order of the k selected cars either, and how many different ways we can order those k cars, k factorial different ways. So after we have adjusted for overcounting, now we have the total number of outcomes, which is n factorial divided by k factorial and n minus k factorial. Voila, that is the binomial coefficient, n choose k. So the binomial coefficient gives the numbers, uh, gives the number of possible outcomes of picking k atoms out of n atoms, where orders do not matter. So in our case, we can plug in n equals 52 and k equals 5. And we know those outcomes are equally likely, so we can apply the naive probability. But to apply this definition, naive definition, we still need to know the number of outcomes in A, right? So let's calculate the number of outcomes in A. So let's first choose the rank that we have the three cars of a triplet. How many different choices you have? We have 13 different ranks. 
So we choose one rack, keep the rack. Now, how many different ways of choosing three cards of a given rack? Note that we have four different fields for that rack. And others does not matter, so we have to choose three out of four fields, which is the binomial coefficient for choose three, right? Then the next is we need to choose the rack that we have the two cards of from the remaining racks. How many choices do we have? We already pick up one rack of, out of 13, so we have 12 left, 12. How many different ways of choosing two cards of a given rack? Now we have to choose two out of four different fields, which will be the binomial coefficient for choose two. Okay, now it's easy to calculate the number of outcomes in A according to the multiplication rule. We simply multiply those numbers mentioned above. So this is the number of outcomes in A. Given we have both numbers, what is the probability of a full house? It's the ratio of number of outcomes in A divided by the total. Uh, number of outcomes. Okay, so this is the result for the first problem. You can check examples of poker probability on Wikipedia and practice the counting strategy to see if you can deliver exactly the same results or not. Well, there is uh, so many different ways of counting and it is fun, okay? Now we have finished uh, we have finished discussing the first problem where order does not matter. Let's discuss problem two where order matters. So a full house with dice. Suppose we roll five identical dice. What is the probability of a full house? For example, you have three uh, threes and two sixths. In this case, order matters. If you don't understand why order matters, we'll explain near the end of this video, okay? So, again, to apply the naive probability, we need to know the number of all outcomes, all possible outcomes. So the number of elements in the sample space S. We also need to know the number of outcomes in A. So how many outcomes can achieve a full house? Let's first calculate the number of out outcomes in uh, in S. Different from problem one, now is sampling with replacement. Okay, we have k dice, each would have n different outcomes, and you see for each step, for each step, uh, for each dice, we have all the same n possible outcomes, right? So here is sampling with replacement. For each possible outcomes, you have the same choices from zero, from one to six. So it is sampling with replacement. And you see the number of outcomes does not change through the steps. Now we mu multiply k n's together, it will be n to the power k of ordered outcomes. So in this case, if you have two, three, 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 it's a different outcome from 33332. Okay. Now, how many ordered outcomes in A? Well, each of the outcomes in A will be ordered as well. So let's first select the number A that we have three dice of a triplet. How many choices we have? Six, right? Then how many different ways of choosing three dice out of five to have the number A? And then we have to choose three out of five. For example, you can pick up one, three, five to be of number A. Then we have we need to have the outcome like A. Well, if another number is B, then we have the outcome A B A B A, right? So we still need to select the number B that we have two dice of. How many choices do we have? It need to be a different number than A. So uh, it, uh, we have five choices of there because a die, a die has six different numbers, right? And then the remaining two dice must have the number B. Through this procedure, we give 
the number of possible ordered outcomes in A that can be a, a full house, which is A, B, for example, A, B, A, B, A, that's a possible outcome, right? You just plug in some numbers for A and some other numbers for B. So now we have the number of ordered outcomes, which is simply to multiply the three numbers mentioned above. Okay. What is the probability of a full house in this problem? That's the ratio of number of outcomes in A divided by the number of outcomes in S. So what are the differences in the two problems? Well, apparently without replacement, always replacement is a key difference. So basically you check in each step whether the number of outcome, uh, outcomes changes or not, okay? With replacement, the number of outcomes in each step, step does not change. And the order matters when replacement is present. So this call back the previous question you might have. Why order matters in the second case? Why the order matters in the problem two? If you wonder that, let's think about a simple experiment. Row two dice. Let's see which of the two events are more likely. Event A, two dice are both ones. Okay. Event B, one die is two, another die is three. Which one is, are they equally likely? Which one is more likely? The event B will be more likely because it contains actually two ordered outcomes. Two, three, and three, two. Well, event B, A only contains one ordered outcomes. Okay, which will be one, one. So that is why order matters in the problem two because when we want to apply the naive definition of probability, we need to make sure all the outcomes are equally likely. So that is why order, that is also why order matters when replacement is present. When you have replacement, when you count the number of outcomes, the outcomes need to take into account the orders, then it affects the way of counting. Well, however, the way we count may not be unique. For example, you can also consider in problem one. Well, if it is when, uh, without replacement, you can either consider orders or not consider orders that will not change the probability. In problem one, if you consider orders, well, basically you multiply uh, both numerator and denominator by five factorial, and the ratio remains the same. So I guess through those two problems, you're gonna realize counting is not always easy. And to learn how to count, you need to practice a bit more. Thank you for watching this video and good, good luck with counting all different combinations of pokers or dice. Thanks.